Welcome everybody to the Destiny Dugout. I'm your host Cruz, member of the three-time world's first team from Elysium, and this is what we've got going on this episode. Check out myself and Vandal's socials, which are in the description box below. Thank you on a personal level for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy listening, and let us know what you think in the comment section. Now without further ado, let's get this thing started. I wonder if there's like a... I wonder if there's like a third party app or something that would make it easier to like instead of utilizing discord as a scene uh -huh. if there is a different thing we could use like i'm not saying well we should, here's like, the I'm thing not saying use, like, i don't really need shit. it anymore to be fair because <clears throat> we're not i'm not using the background like the only thing I use on it is our initial cards with the volume thing, but because like oh. the kind of the webcam kind of like border, I'll say that's around us covers it, and yeah. I'm using a separate icon because I wanted it to be bigger. So it's honestly, honestly, I don't need it. So <laughs> you know what? Next time I'll probably change that. <laughs> we could, we could literally have whatever background we wanted, and I just make it whatever size square we want. I don't even need it to be a rectangle. I could be a, it could be a square. Yeah. But I guess this is decent if we ever want to add in face cam. Not that we're planning on doing that, but whatever. I don't know. Maybe in the future you can put up your face. What about yours? So It'll be low. weird. What do you what do you mean? <laughs> they want to see the vandalized TV. I don't even want to see that. <laughs> Vandal doesn't actually have any mirrors up in his uh, apartment. No. He doesn't want to see it. I don't believe in reflective objects. <laughs> <laughs> is the camera reflective or is it's just like another eye, so technically it's loud. Hmm. Mm. <clears throat> anyway, mm. um, I'm gonna use that as the intro. Though. I'm using that as the intro. I haven't recorded, oh, <laughs> so fuck. we're we're going we're going from here. We are back. Um, I I believe this is episode six. Um, we're recording this like late Wednesday, uh, February eighth. Um, so it has been about seven weeks. I want to say eight weeks. Yeah, that sounds since right. the last episode, so basically, you know, like around two months in the amount, we're not keeping count. So, yeah, a lot has changed. You can probably tell from all these tabs I have opened that there is a lot of stuff to talk about now, which is great for us because, you know, we were kind of getting low on the idea ring. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was I scraping. Was... There's only so many times you can talk about the the seasonal rotation of uh oh my gosh i don't want to think about do that. activity again to open the chest talk to vendor listen we to, had like a message. deep conversation about catch crash <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how that's how it got um oh boy so yeah um we didn't really i won't say we had a big reason for like not being around aside from just like not feeling like we have a bunch of stuff to talk about that actually feels like relevant. You know, we can generate content ideas to talk about, but sometimes I don't know, with how Destiny was, Vandal getting into WoW a little more, it's just kinda like a it's kind of like a natural little just break for both of us. Um, it would just be it would just be fluff. It would just be just just kind of just fluff. Uh, maybe yeah, you know, we could talk about just like random things to just basically kill the time. And I mean, I guess if that's if people still like hearing that, I don't know, maybe in the future, because I imagine seasons aren't going to be entirely exciting though every every week in and week out, right? Yeah, but, I mean, if you really like hearing our voice, then we can definitely <clears throat> even just like throw up really short stuff. Um, and I think going forward, like probably sooner rather than later, we will have probably a few more voices coming on every now and then just to, oh, yeah. you know, spice things up. Um, but yeah, I think like, I mean, we'll see, like seasonal model will change uh, by next season, right? Not the, the one that's coming, but the one after, uh, from what I remember Joe talking about was season 21 is when it's going to start getting its revamp. So, you know, we might even have like a little bit 
of a, a unique season. Uh, which which might be nice, you know. I'm alright with another boring one though for Lightfall, you know, because it's coming with Lightfall, thankfully. Yep. Um. Other thing, um, we got like a newer layout. So last one we recorded, we were kind of going through some bigger changes that were coming. I don't even remember what they were, but uh, I had a little window basically with like the webcam and showed my monitor, and we read through things together. One thing that was kind of brought up is that yeah, it's a, it's kind of small and b kind of like just felt not necessarily perfectly in place. So new layout is going to be basically how you see it now with this like main bordered frame. Vandal and I in our little spots, and we can throw in another spot for any other guest that comes on. For now, we've just got a lot of stuff to read, which is you know what we're going to be doing today. But a lot of other ones, maybe when we're just talking probably just have like some general background gameplay going on and that way you can kind of have a little bit of a visual element to it as well so hopefully you guys like it i yeah it didn't take me too long to make but i mean it's clean simple hopefully it gets the job done that's kind of what's there for yeah definitely um in the comments any more suggestions you know we like hearing it you know we don't we don't make this so that we could rewatch it we make it so you guys can watch it <laughs> Yeah, and if, if this is a better viewing experience, then we'll go with that. If there's something, you know, for example, like we don't really see the green lines when each of us talk, but I was saying earlier that I'm sure they know our voices by now, so it's not necessarily as important. Um, but that could be something that, you know, I try to bring back if, if needed. Just whoever sounds cooler, it's probably Cruz. That's who's talking. Debatable, but... <laughs> um. Last little thing before we start reading all this build crafting stuff is just kind of what we're planning on doing going forward up until Lightfall and then a little after. So obviously we have a bunch of tabs up here. We will not get through all of these. I expect we'll get through two of these and that means we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six as of Wednesday, February 8th to get through. And we'll still have probably more updates coming too with like a little more strand information or stuff like that. So pretty much we will just kind of have chew these. Yeah, we'll just chew through these, get our you know input out there. Um, we're not kind of too worried about how much time we spend on each thing. If we want to keep talking about one, we will kind of keep focused on that. And then probably over the next little bit, not necessarily a set schedule. We might have one come out on Sunday um, just to kind of catch up a little bit, which is nice. And then we have something a little different planned for our Wendigo week and the final week of the season um, up until Lightfall. And, of course, during Lightfall, I'd imagine first week um, definitely have one. Second week, maybe we'll see with the uh, raid coming up. We might do it like saturday night instead to kind of get a recap of it rather than a prelude so yeah, yeah. that and, is uh, for wendigo week do you want to talk about the guests that we're gonna have uh i don't know do you want to i was kind well, of thinking I maybe guess... keep a little secret well basically i guess we can talk about the structure if you want sure go ahead but you got it you know what you're doing right oh Okay. Are we on the same um, page. <laughs> ba basically, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a different guest every day, or a try to every day for for Wendigo Week. Um, and I mean, I don't know if there's any reason to keep it a secret because I kind of want people to cater questions to them too. Okay. Right? So we're gonna be interviewing everybody on Cruz's team. That's gonna be the first five guests right there. Uh, most likely starting with the man, the myth, the legend himself. Salty Greppo. Salty Greppo. Yeah, so, and what we're going to do, which is kind of the cool thing, you know, we've got this almost like, I don't want to say like celebration of like a farming week because we'll see when we talk about the weapons that maybe Wendigo's not going to be as relevant as we may have thought. But um, we kind of do like these little mini episodes where we can kind of hit one topic with a certain person. And then during another run couple gms we'll hit it with another person and we kind of just keep going from there yeah and then we'll try and 
we'll try and spice up the GMs a little bit, make it a little interesting. It'll probably be hard to get Salt to use anything that isn't, you know, RB and like whatever else is insane. Um, yeah, we'll just, maybe we'll go triple Arc Strider for the Vile one. Yeah, <laughs> bring, that's bring that back. An absolute throwback. <laughs> Um, that'd be nice but definitely if you guys have any questions or any topics you'd like to see specifically from anyone on Cruz's team um, in case anyone here doesn't know Vile is bona fide hunter main up there with Quaz who's also a hunter player Cruz and Salt are both titan players and uh, uh, Mupol and Kairos are both warlock players so if that helps you with your questions that's uh good to know yeah a little bit of team info there if, if you're curious um most of us are pretty like capable of flexing some more than others um <laughs> for example vile do not you don't want to see him on anything but a hunter but um yeah. you know obviously myself talked about on here i'm very comfortable in pretty much anything titan just is my favorite to play so that's why i try to stick with it yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sort of the same way, so I definitely vibe with that. I mean, that's why <clears throat> Cruz and I get along so well because we both understand, um, kind of everything there is to offer, right? I mean, there's there's nothing. Oh my God, there's nothing worse when you're trying to talk to someone. And you're like, oh, I wonder if this would work with knockout, and they're like, knockout, what is that? <laughs> and you're like, hmm, okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, Never all right. Mind. That's yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm not. I'm not gonna explain for the hundredth time. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah. I mean, uh, if you have any questions, um, you know, leave them in the comments. If anything, um, I think uh, this is sort of on the fly here. Cruz, I don't know if you want to put out a tweet, maybe talking about. Yeah, it. I mean, I can just yeah um, for sure. And then uh, you guys can go on Twitter and you can put your questions on Twitter. Um. We're going to talk with, with Salt specifically. There may be some kind of uh, intertwining between his stream and the recording. What do you think about that? Yeah, for sure. I was thinking even um, during those days, we might even do some some live recording. Just yeah, to that's another thing I was up. thinking of. Yeah. So definitely, um, you know, keep an eye out on for Cruz's stream. We'll talk about it again and, you know, the episodes leading up to it. But uh, uh, definitely check Cruz's Twitter, um, and then we'll hopefully have something posted there for your questions, or just post it in the comments. We'll compile it all. We'll 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 you know sift through and um, you know get everything out there for you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's start talking about some build crafting. Oh, oh let's go. Air horns go up. Um, um, man, this uh, is this is in depth. I'll let you start this off. Yeah, I'm gonna just like go through their TLDR here, just because. I mean, they're this is a pretty. Oh, it's not necessarily lengthy, but it's very dense. So yes. We'll kind of start with that and then just kind of go top to bottom and then stop on any points that we kind of think that are kind of key things to think about. Um, so to start, uh, consolidation is a major theme in many of the changes here. Um, current system has been built piecemeal over the years and pretty much that kind of just means like they started with one thing and then added the next and then added the next and they just kind of put it together. That's kind of why the mod system felt so individual, right? You only had charge with light stuff, and then you had warm on sill stuff, and then for the last while, which has pretty much been the meta for the last year and a half, is all of that elemental well stuff. Um, loadouts are coming, which is great, up to ten slots. So I mean, it will maybe we'll see later on if we get more, but honestly, ten. I don't remember if they said this was per character or not. I assume so. I believe so. it's per character. Um, Which and is another good. thing on top of that also, it was confirmed. Uh, was it? Oh, you know what? Actually, never mind. I think someone told me it was confirmed by Hippie on Twitter. But then again, it might have been retracted also. There's claims. Oh, I'll yeah. say there's claims that it uses the API. 
the Bungie API. So that means um, on launch, um, do not rely on these loadout systems. Just do regular armor swaps. Um, also, in any activity where time is of the essence, I would not rely on these again. I would just do standard armor swaps um, up until we know that they don't use the API. Yeah. Um, which pretty much means like you can't necessarily do like the swapping mid encounter. You can't just go bam, apply everything the same way Dim can't. But in orbit or the tower, you can. Um, yeah. But what's nice is that you'll have it all in game. So if you do have to swap mods and stuff like that, you kind of have that in game element to refer to, which should make things a lot quicker. It'd be amazing to just be able to scroll to the loadout setup and then click one and then just have it apply but very be, unlikely that it would happen um the mod customization screen will make managing mods here easier with all of them in one place of course um pretty much the same appearance as like the character screen uh this is kind of where they end up going into the champion stuff which is super cool probably something we'll end up hitting a little bit later um in the pod episode um updates to mods streamline the process and bring new and exciting build potential to destiny 2 that'll that will end up probably hitting in the first step um removing energy types from mods etc reducing armor energy Finally. um if which you is huge clapping, just start clapping now this is all 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 this stuff at the end here this is all just like oh thank god this, weapon this type specific mods that flexibility time they literally say flexibility. Oh, they don't say it in this one. But in like the bottom three points, it's pretty much just giving more flexibility, increased flexibility, and reducing the pressure of yeah. on armor energy. So it's like they just like with right with the artifact like change, like all mm -hmm. these things just add up to making it just so much nicer. Now um, we don't know which it feels great to have. Yeah, no, this is this is all great things. But it's important to remember we don't know exactly we know a couple mods but we don't know exactly what's staying and what's going in terms of uh, the consolidation because they said that they're looking to get rid of a lot of these redundancies right and um as of you know there's recording there's a blog post we'll talk about that a little bit later but um they are it seems like they're moving some of the elemental well mods built to built into the subclass in terms of like spawning the little wells and then also what the wells do right um which tells me that there there's going to be a lot of mods leaving there's um, definitely going to be a big shakeup, and yeah. like i said we don't really know exactly what's staying and what's going but we could kind of use our current system and then kind of apply it to this system to see what sort of things we could do at the very least yeah um real quick before i open up this picture of this warlock with double primary just to kind of break down what what they've got on um they wanted to solve um some issues one for example it will uh, quickly swap entire sets of gear without numerous trips to the vault or having to open a second screen that second screen basically just means like having to use dim right they want everything to be consolidated in game which is good. It's I mean, this is a change that we've wanted for like definitely the last few years. Probably could have had for many more, but better this, late than never. This this also uh, I think this might serve as a uh, sort of a beta or a play test for them to test the ability to access your vault anywhere because. There's a limit to these loadouts, so that means there is a limit to the, to the amount of items. Like, for instance, you could have all 10 of your loadouts be items in your vault, right? And having, you know, applying it and having it pull from your vault to your, for, from the vault to your character, um, kind of wherever you are. I, I, in theory, right? Let's say you're in the middle of a raid and you start, you know, swapping your gear and stuff, right? And that's a, sort of a way of accessing your vault while in an activity. So I think this will be a really good test for them to see if that's even doable. Because if they can do that, 
oh man, this game just jumps 10 levels easily. <laughs> Being able to access your vault anywhere is just insane. Vandal, our APM would go way up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be really good. Uh, other things is decreased time in between play sessions, causing or by needing to rebuild a loadout so if you just like i mean i know there's been plenty of times where i just said like screw it i'm not swapping i'm gonna use this unoptimized yeah. setup because it's too much to think about um and then just the last thing is just labeling them so you can quickly know like okay this is my arc one this is gonna be my uh hoyle solar one this is my hoyle for arc we'll see if we even end up using hoyle still but for now you definitely would um so yeah um do you have the picture up in yeah. front of you all right so yeah you see this warlock with the double primary pulse bow i love how they have all the warmind stuff on because you know it's seasonal that's the yeah. seasonal build right there with the triple arc resist um Jesus. so you know I, i'm sure we'd read it in another one but it's important to talk about here that the artifice armor which is de facto the best armor now it's gonna have basically that fifth slot be another stat slot with three energy so with rezil which is being jumped up from three to four you couldn't put a full rezil there couldn't put a full intellect there and can't put a full recup there but you could get an extra 10 discipline literally just for having artifice armor all of these first slots and final slots are only for stats, but these middle three are for any combat mod in the game. So that could be things like fastball, that could be a resist, that could be um, something like dynamo, that could be like in the current system, that could be uh, explosive armaments, um, cooperation recuperation like any mod whether it be in the final column and be like a elemental well setup or just a general reloader for example all of these can kind of go they're still going to be segmented to their spots let's say because i don't think you're going to be able to run triple arc resist in every slot <laughs> so <means> you know <laughs> like they're still going to be in their categories but there's a few of them that are going to be branching out so um there's going to be a lot more customizability. The flexibility of these builds is going to be honestly insane. Like you're going to, you're going to have so much freedom. I don't even know what I'm going to yeah. do with it because if you really did want to sacrifice all of your resists, for example, I mean, you could even pick like all of your finders that would give you in the current system comparatively two extra slots to run seeking wells, um, Char uh, charge with light mod like it's two more slots to run an armor combat slot mod that we normally wouldn't now but you could also go the other way and just go full send with recuperation and bomber for already, example yeah. like you could, there's so many different things you could do yep and and the big thing here is you can essentially you can build your own neutral game it with what seems like a lot of effort but it's i think it's very minimal um because all the restrictions are gone right and so as long as some of these mods you know like there's mods like impact induction momentum transfer all that stuff is staying um and and sort of the freedom and like like cruz was talking about it's just going to allow you to build your own neutral game how you want it and not be stifled by like the 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 element of your armor and like you know making sure you have all these charge of light mods on like you could just do it exactly how you want to do it um and this is this is definitely gonna like it, i can tell you they made this change because the current mod system and they said it at the top is very bloated and and it was not designed with the future in mind they made it for for the right now right and so and then the right now became the back then and so like it was never designed to like test this to stand the test of time and so by doing this there this is a full restart this is designed to go the distance 
right? They are they are revamping this, and they are now this is their core mechanic and everything in the future that does maybe get added or changed is with this in mind and this is really good it's very healthy for the game especially for i think it's experienced players and and more more so uh, newer players in my opinion Um, yeah because a new player doesn't necessarily understand that a loadout system even exists with something like dim Mm-hmm. now like dim obviously is still gonna be great for pulling individual items so this is definitely not a replacement to it but somebody who joins the game and wants to i don't know because now they have access to every mod right now right and going forward i can't imagine it changing so you kind of just have so much to your arsenal you might want to mess around with a few other things and then you unlock, I don't know, the solar subclass, right? Some some new players like, what the heck is this solar? That's so cool. I'm gonna use that. Or they they get the lightfall and they start using strand. You don't have to ditch that setup that you liked before, and you can keep it and then enhance it later. I come back after playing, you know, ten hours for like a few weeks or something like that as an uber casual. And I see uh, an Astrocross build video, you know? And it's like, whoa, that's cool. I want to try that on my arc. I can quickly just go to that little arc node that I had on my loadout, mix and match a few more things, and then it's it's already made. Like, yep. I don't think it's going to be that hard either to, like, find things. That's one thing, um, I'll say the current... You know when you hover over armor? And it's yep. like these two strips that you have to page over? I think giving obviously like individual customization on armor would be the same, but having this sort of transmog type screen where you just have this full page dedicated to all this stuff, I imagine or I hope we get this giant grid of just all the stuff we can use. It's like here, Guardian, pick whatever you want. Use this. <laughs> like I don't know. If if that were in the game too, with like everything that's coming. That's going to help somebody who doesn't know what loadouts are really designed for in mods. That's going to help so much, especially if they add a little bit more detail to what they do, because some of them are still a little vague, but I'm sure with some consolidation, there might be a few less redundancies in terms of a lot of these mods. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, later on, we're going to see, um, some specific mods, but um, the the transmog system was also sort of a a, a test for them for this. Honestly, yeah, because with it, this it layout page, same... it's it's so similar. Yeah, it's almost it's almost a one to one. They saw the transmog system and that it worked. Um, I was a big skeptic of the transmog system before, um, but then I completely overestimated how many things i would actually want to use as transmog but that's a different story. i know right <laughs> <laughs> yeah everyone was so up in arms and i mean i'm and always you, at like 10 per character yeah i yeah, get something and new at, and i just passively pick like, up a vanguard like, one you're like i want to uh i want to get a cool warlock helmet you have about four options <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well so, we used to have zero so that's, that's pretty true. good <laughs> um but no, this is this is great. This is an absolute step in the right direction. Um, and I, this I'm, is going to be I'm... one of the most fun things for us to mess with. Like honestly, oh, like yes. because it like I've just kind of passively been reading and keeping up with the news and stuff like that. It is like thinking back on this. Like this is this is gonna have so much. Like I know Cruz and I we talked about this. Um, I think it was in another podcast episode. We talked about the consolidating, but like, you know, mods like Melee Wellmaker and Grenade Wellmaker, um, and, and just having everything sort of separate like that and, and having to run two different ways to uh, generate stuff and all these other things. And like, it was just, it was so convoluted, man. It was awful. You know, you pretty much, you made your build to do one thing and one thing only. But now you can do just about everything in one go. So. Yeah, I can definitely see myself sinking time into this because there's going to be so much more potential for us to make like 
<laughs> meme builds because of oh, like yeah. I, i'm gonna run five i don't know <laughs> bombers like, and i'm expect, going to rift and then nade every single chance i get expect the storm dancers brace build it's like make a return it's a glorious return i wonder if they'll if they'll keep energy converter yeah i mean it's a pretty strong mod i think it could work with the armor charge system which we'll yeah. talk about in a little in yeah. like probably like five minutes <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so the like these here? well these i'm kind of still in the middle of these pictures gotcha. um these loadouts are tied to this new guardian rank system um uh, for anyone who basically plays the game actively has done all the newest stuff you know you're, I think you're going to start with either six or seven like loadout slots because of your initial rank. And then the way to get, basically get a higher is just like, you know, almost like moments of triumph. Like, go go do this type of thing. Go play some comp and be a nice person. Um, and you'll uh, increase your rank and you'll you'll have all your uh, your slots available. I don't think it's going to be very gatekeepy with these slots. Like, I'm sure Bungie wants most people to have 10 slots. So if, if the average Joe can go get 10 slots, then any of us, if they if we don't already start with it, we'll get it within the first week, I would say. I, so that's I imagine just... it'll be something simple like defeat a couple primevals in Gambit. Exactly. Know. Yeah. Like maybe earn some rep. They might just do rep base because defeating the primevals assumes you win. So like just reach a certain rep rank and gambit or like just something that requires some little bit of a sink but nothing too crazy not gonna like pull your hair out or anything like you know because like you said they want you to have these these are not like a locked thing that like only the, the special few can have all 10 slots hmm, no. if there's one thing bungie's <laughs> gonna do for that it's not gonna be the mod system yeah like they want this to be one of their entries I'm sure like the new light quest is going to it maybe even be updated soon to involve putting on mods just to tell you like hey you should put on this grab this mod and put it here you can customize your armor any which way you want it's your you know <laughs> it's like yeah I think that's a pretty they smart thing for them to invest into considering this is kind of one of becoming one of the most foundational pieces to uh to destiny as much yeah, as it may I mean, not mean much in low level content when you when you look at and that's a big thing to distinguish right like and i know we talked about this i know for sure i might have i definitely touched on this like all these builds you see on youtube and stuff from your favorite creators and whatnot that you know that they have all they're all very fancy and flashy and stuff and it's like oh get a kill with your bow and do a dodge and do this and pick up this well through your grenade and you get your super and then su like all these things that sounds all fine and dandy but when you're playing with six people in an activity you, you have no control over if someone's using trinity ghoul or not because if someone's using trinity ghoul your build doesn't exist like everything's just getting deleted right and with a lot of what this does is it it removes I think it removes kind of the ability to, to, to even create those like turbo convoluted builds. And it just makes it just more of like just a, just a passive gain. And that seems like what they're, they're going more towards instead of just having like hyperactive mods, it's all passive mods. Uh, and that's what we're going to kind of segue into a little bit here, I think. Um, yeah, because the mods know. are kind of one of the next big things that they're kind of working on um we kind of like t you know talking about the builds and all the mods a little bit earlier but i gotta read this intro bit here just because you know yeah. it, there's something in there uh when lifefall goes live it'll be a new ball game there of it sorts is. <laughs> things will be different <laughs> and you'll have a blank slate to start cooking up new builds uh for future adventures not all current builds in destiny 2 will be possible upon launch that's because they're getting rid of some uh, but there will be a healthy offering to start with, which also means that I hope that they do expand on it relatively soon. Like maybe by the next season, we're kind of getting some new things. That'd be yeah. cool. Um, and what's I think what's cool is that they don't necessarily f 
have to um only add armor combat slot like mods like they can just do general ones like you know when they brought out like grenade kickstart stuff like that i think obviously with strand coming we will expect some more there but i think they have a little more freedom to do some more general mods which is also kind of nice because it kind of gives them more freedom to be more creative um yeah. i wonder if they're going to kind of because like we talked like we said like we've been talking about you know they're, they're generalizing a lot of things trying to make it more neutral across the board I wonder if they're going to have any mods that kind of dip their toes into specialties. You know what I mean? Um, I know that they talked about certain elemental kind of mods, like Energy Fire sort of, or like Font, and we'll, we'll discuss that more. But I wonder how, where else, what other direction they're going to go, or if they're just going to keep it absolutely general, you know? It's really up to them. I mean, I'm down yeah. for whatever, right? Honestly, for now, I think the changes coming are probably enough to hold us for, I'd probably say, half the year, like, comfortably. And then going into, like, the next year is when we'll kind of already understand everything. Because um, even with Elemental Walls, you know, they came out, we all thought they were so bad. They kind of added some more. They got a little better. And then... Is like I feel like it was a season after they buffed Font of Might that it really start picking up. Well, I think it was also kind of hand in hand with the ability spam meta that we kind of entered very slowly but surely. We just like kind of stepped into this meta where abilities are just being thrown out like crazy, right? And a lot of those wells are being made by abilities, and that was a big problem because it was like toss your nade, get a solar well so what who cares yeah. right like solar well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about a solar well. what does that do for me you know oh well of ordinance i get a tiny bit of grenade energy back who cares you know and uh not to mention there are certain mods that the duration of these buffs that you got for picking up wells and we didn't have seeking wells in the beginning and it was just impossible it was like you get five seconds of fonta might what are you supposed to do in five <laughs> seconds i know you right? spent you spent you spent a, two seconds running to the well, and now you're spending two seconds running back to where you were, to where you can utilize your fonts of might. You got nothing out of that, right? Um, and then a lot of the words and the, the verbiage used on some of these mods was just not clear, you know? Like, it, it just, it, it required you to test it and basically, like, see if you understood it correctly instead of just it being written correctly right and and that was a big you know downside of the wells and then they buffed like two things and then wells became absolutely insane and then also like i said co in combo with the, the the ability spam um it really just made wells like the next best thing oh and we can't forget they they got rid of orbs on masterwork weapons that is literally what fueled all charge with light builds yeah like, charge with light was king because of that and they forced you to run a helmet mod to make orbs again, instantly killed Charge with Light, like for the most part. Like it's just it, besides the little niche scenarios, but Charge with Light just died right then and there. And the best way to get Charge with Light now and like before this change is with elemental charge. <laughs> yep. So it's like you actually want to make an elemental wall to then get charged with light. And that's like the only mod. I mean, there's a mod in Warmind Cells too, RIP. Um but yeah. there was a mod there where that also like collecting one gave you a charge but yeah it's uh th that orb cut that 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 happened i mean who's running like you would have to run pretty much harmonic siphon which i mean most people do cuz it's one cost but now you're kind of forced into that mono build which while good in most cases with the current system of end game um you know, match game is still a thing, so it's like on oh, GMs, what do you do? You can't really use that. Orbs become less popular, less potent. Um, wells become more potent, more popular, and it's just West one went down, the other one skyrocketed, and the three point definitely helped in that uh, regard to the ability spam, which is something they're aware of, which is good. 
Um, one thing that they talked about with the mods too is that they do want to, like this last note here, while also tamping down on areas of power creep. I think that's a really important thing to note. They are aware of maybe a little too much, which um, I'm sure with this new armor system, mod system, we won't necessarily have the effectiveness that we once did, even though all the mods are going to be there. Yeah. and that... I just can't imagine them copying it over. Yeah, and that's why, you know, in the past, your your mod setup for day ones, for instance, right, was fairly important what mods you were running, um, especially going into damage phases. And so, you know, seeing them talk about that, I remember when I first read this and I started reading it over and over again and looking at it, I there's no way that Font can survive this in my opinion not in the same way it'll be it'll be different i mean even with what we know now reading ahead and knowing all that it, we still don't really know exactly how it's gonna like work yeah um so one thing with all this mod stuff is that besides the loadout screen there's actually like a full out mod screen as well and that is also connected to your weapon so if you I don't really think the weapons tab really matters as much unless you have like two perks and like let's say you had headstone and uh i don't know frenzy it's like maybe with a certain weapon or a certain build you want to emphasize your stasis explosion so you'll have headstone on the weapon but most of the time if you're not using that then you'd rather have frenzy but i do like that they at the very least even if it isn't as relevant or potent to have, combining the two screens is, it's just nice to have them all put together, you know? That's a quality of life thing that they did ahead of time, which I like a lot. Because normally and, I don't necessarily get that. And I think we'll talk a little bit more pretty soon here, but if you look at the mod customization screen, um, at the middle right there, you'll see your artifact and you'll see those three champion symbols. Um, those are your passive effects that you have going right now based off your artifact. So we'll, we'll talk more about that, but that just keep that in mind. Artifact, it's another like amazing quality of life thing. Yes. Um, which is we're about to get to pretty much. Um, do you want to read through this um or skim through it or... earning the mods the story yada, yada yada the mod application details yeah see they already talked about mod energy types are being removed eliminating the need for four different versions of any given armor piece for build crafting purposes we're also converting the combat style socket into additional mod socket for that armor slot it's kind of what cruz is talking about mm -hmm. we're also reducing the energy cost of many of those mods helping you give more opportunities to mix and match. And I think that a big one of those is going to be um, the arc mods, which were notoriously, ridiculously expensive. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, like, heavy-handed. It was obnoxious. Yeah. Heavy-handed um, for seven costs was... Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a good mod, but it is not seven. That's It was insane. Um, and there were, there were some other mods that were pretty expensive, too, but most notably the arc mods. Um, additionally, armor mods that previously provided benefits to weapons based on their archetype, for example, hand cannon loader will now instead provide benefits to weapons based on their damage type. Um, and this sort of plays into the, like, you're playing solar, use solar weapons kind of fantasy, to my knowledge. Um, so basically you have, like, you could use, um, what's the solar hand cannon from King's Fall? Why am I forgetting this thing? Um, uh, Zally's Bane. Is that what I you almost forgot that? to. <laughs> and then you can use a like Galar horn and then just run a solar loader. Solar, you know, solar loader. And it should ideally work with both, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, there, this levels the playing field for all weapon archetypes and should make it easier to put together a powerful suite of mods to benefit multiple weapons in your loadout. You're sharing a damage type, right? So things like um, Nezarak Sin, uh, Verity's Brow, all gain tons of value right and even like gear falcons 
right? Your mm-hmm. value is already insane, and this just makes it even better. Um, but that's not all. Artifact mods are also being translated to unlockable perks, and that's important because it's no longer a mod, it's now a perk. Like, it's just a passive buff. They will no longer need to be socketed, but rather unlock for the duration of the season once earned and are passively applied to your loadout, which means you put on, and, and if this isn't another paragraph here, but you put on anti-barrier pulse, you unlock it on the artifact, and you just, all your pulses that you equip from here on out have anti-barrier. That's it. It's done. You, you went to your artifact, you applied your mods, and now you have the benefit of the mods at all times, regardless of what you do. Right. No more running seven cost unstop GL. Yeah. Just so, so that you awful. You're, oh my yeah. god. It's you know, like this... or, or anti berry sniper. It's just like if you get it, you just have it, which is yeah. such a nice thing. That's awesome. <laughs> this change means you no longer need to equip a mod for this, taking up pressure space and energy. All your pulse rifles, unless they have an intrinsic champion mod, will automatically have anti berry equipped, and by that they mean, let's say there's unstoppable hand cannon, and you put on. Um, Ariana's Vow, you're not going to get an unstoppable Ariana's Vow. Ariana's Vow is still going to be only anti-barrier, right? So you can't mix and match like that, which totally balanced, otherwise would be super broken. But Yeah, I mean, it's already pretty much in the game now. When we've had anti-barrier bow, um, the Monarch is not doing anti-barrier and overload, right? So Yeah. Or, well, actually the Monarch is over... Whatever, there's there's other mix and match. Let's flip it around. Uh, the Monarch's anti-barrier. I always forget. As you can imagine, having every single artifact mag at the same time will be a little OP. Because of that, you won't be able to unlock <laughs> them all at the same time. And we'll have to choose which 12 perks you have active at any given time. So this kind of goes back to how we used to have it. You could only unlock 12 mod slots, but you had to equip them, which sucked. And now we have it to where we eventually, over time, you can unlock everything, but you still have to equip them. And there's certain ones that are like 5 costs on class item. You know, another five cost. Like the the last row is all like super high cost. A lot of them are class item based. You can only realistically fit like two of them on your class item. And with this, it's you're not getting all the mods, but at the same time, you get the ones the the ones you you want exactly, and it's not going to cost you anything to have them active, right? Um. And however, we do want to make this as easy as possible to change up your build. So reset the artifact will not cost anything. I said this when we got the artifact, and I'm pretty sure Cruz remembers. We both probably agreed on this. We both probably said it at the same time. The fact that it cost Glimmer, and the Glimmer cost <laughs> kept going yeah. exponentially up every time you did it, was just awful from day one. It was literally horrible. Because you put out, back then, you, you selected your 12th mod, and you're like, I want to test this out. You start using it, and you're like, this mod kind of sucks. You reset. Your cost went from 10k to like 25k. You test another mod. You reset 25k to like 70k or something like that. Like it just kept going like exponentially higher and it was completely like unreasonable. Yeah, I remember earlier on like there was a mod like there were three good ones in the final and like my I think it was like when um like super damage or like uh, light abilities against stasis targets like did more damage. Oh, yep. I um, that one, yep. I didn't have it on my warlock. But then I wanted it just because we were doing a bunch of Atrax stuff. So, like, I had to reset, and that was, like, my second one or something. And it was, like, 50k or something like that. Like, why yeah. is this a thing? Like, I just because I want to use it for, like, a day. now, yep. And then I'm going to have to swap back because I don't want it forever. Like, yeah. Insane. You got punished. You actually got punished for, for, for trying new builds, ironically. Right? Um, so what is this very mean? different myth, like concept than how it is now because and now now they're like oh try a new build you can keep the other one just try it <laughs> if you don't like yep. it go back <laughs> <laughs> you know and and, and I, you know that probably has to do with player retention and stuff because all that stuff it really it really sours people right i mean we yeah it's just annoying we nobody wants it, to deal with that yeah it does it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth but so what does this mean for artifice armors extra artifact mod slot so i know a lot of end game players are farming duality actually it's this week the duality farms and getting your artifice armor and it is confirmed that the artifice armor you have now will retroactively turn into the new armor so have no fear don't delete your stuff um 
Starting in Lightfall, Artifice Armor will have a new unique mod slot that grants three additional points to your character's stats like Strength, Mobility, Intellect, etc. This will help round out your stats as you perfect your builds. This just makes Artifice Armor, like, it's already the best armor in the game. This is, It's just light years ahead now. Like it's yeah, just... it's like the best armor in the game, but it's just like sometimes you won't need it, but sometimes you will. Like sometimes you have one extra cost, and now you can run like a pulse rifle loader with your pulse on stop, for example. Um, that's in the concept of this current system where the artifact mods have to be applied. But um, yeah, artifice armor is just the best now. I mean, I was talking about it earlier. You just get free stats. It's literally just three more points to put put stats wherever. So. Yeah. Like, if you ever want to have, like, I'll say OP stats, they're not OP, but, like, efficient high tier stats across the board, the only armor you should consider getting is Artifice. Um, like, right now, Duality is the only place you can actually really get good rolls on it, because the other two ra uh, dungeons have, like, Fires crazy... Fires drops really low for some reason, and grass it's... is just awful to farm. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but, but neither of them have like the um, caps here. Like uh, a duality, I think it's sixty-two to sixty-nine. The others yeah. go down to like fifty-five to like sixty-six or something like that. Yeah, so they're just terrible. most, and there's I feel like it's super weighted to like sixty and lower. Um, yeah. may like it's not as spiky. Like the duality armor is. I mean, it's not quite dreambane armor, but it is crazy comparatively yeah so and one thing i would i would like to see is um be artifice armor being earned through pvp uh i'm not a big pvp -er myself but i do recognize that with it being just stats now that's pretty important in pvp um and i'd like to see it earnable you know honestly in flawless pool if flawless pool sticks around yeah, that would be cool. I feel like I feel like that would be a nice balance rather than cuz cuz again, I'm not a huge PvPer. Cruz and I we don't PvP all that often. We do it when we need to. Um <clears throat> but I do think that the game forcing you to dive into PvP for things when you really shouldn't need to or don't want to sucks. And it goes vice versa, right? Having PvPers have to go into PvE and try and duality farm and all that stuff when you know that kind of sucks so like having another way to get it um you know maybe it's just maybe it's slightly easier or my time efficient to just farm some trials flawless pool you know and it also gives you incentive to actually not reset your card mm -hmm. you know um but that's that's a whole different thing so once you've gotten your loadout set in your mods man it's just time to dive in make some gameplay and complement the above changes and i guess i'll read this one real quick game set match um one thing uh, play the part so you build is match game so this is talking about match game and how pretty much match game i i want to say they're saying this without actually saying this match game is just awful like they don't want to actually say it but they know they're they're basically acknowledging that match game sucks and it does suck because not only does match game suck because you know you have to obviously match the element but you have weapons like Arbalest that completely trivializes the entire thing. Right? Well, I mean, like RB and like, I don't know. I don't know if there's another thing like it, but I mean, the point of like hard light and Borealis is that they're supposed to be like good in match game because you can just deal with everything. Yeah. But uh, it's just why, not why how use it either works of those and... when you can use an exotic that just deals with all of it without having to hold reload to swap anything. And it just rips through. And not only does it rip through <laughs> shields in one shot, with the catalyst, it reloads itself, and then it buffs its own damage by 50%. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just super like, good. Like, RB is insane. Bandle and I were is... ready before RB got its buff, and we knew whenever it got it, it was going to be the best weapon. And look we at it now. We were talking about it for seasons, man. And if we could, we'd, we wish we could go back and, and you know, our, our clan Discord and show you how we relentlessly got bullied. For believing in Arbalest. It was the Arbabest. Yeah, yeah. Arbabest. That was the that was the name. I wanna say like that was like Shadow Keep year we were talking about it. Yeah, I mean, because it the, the concept was there, it just needed to be applied. And then when they did apply it, 
like holy shit arbalest yeah just it took got over, that man. but it was also like during all the linear buffs too that it got oh, so yeah. it's just like it's just a perfect storm of like so many things yep um and to be honest i don't think bungie really realized how good it already was but yep. getting like genesis on top of the cattle like it's just so many things it just <laughs> made it so good anyway this is all about match game but i mean another thing they want to incentivize these mono builds being like kind of like the most efficient builds now and yeah. like optimize like hey if you can go all solar because it'll make your build a little bit more effective you don't have to but you maybe should um and match, match game, game just was... made it so you couldn't do it it went directly against that philosophy <laughs> completely like they wanted that, like you said, they wanted you to have you go all solar, and then match game exists. Have fun going all solar and getting ran over by a knight with an arc shield. Yeah, and you know? to be honest, now that we know, like you click on a GM and tell you there's, you'll find arc and solar shields. So it's like, okay, I can I can use solar and I'll be okay. Like it won't be great, but you know I can, and then use RB for arc, for and, example. And it also feels bad because these GMs have burns. They have void burns, solar burns. Oh yeah, you, you pretty much use, have to you go want to into use that. a weapon with that burn, but then you're like, oh, there's an arc shield. <sighs> All right, we'll just put on RB. Arc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or yeah, I guess everybody have RB. <laughs> it's uh, like there's no anti barriers though. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> literally, RB. Literally, who cares? <laughs> RB is an efficient ad clear. <laughs> Hell yeah. RB is just efficient at everything. Um, speaking so, of champions though, i mean this is a pretty good transition with rb well i wanted i wanted to touch on the end here right to, okay to the, here you go to reach that goal match game, match game is being removed from high difficulty activities which is mainly put at at, at gms grandmaster nightfalls and we're making yeah, GMs how you can and do... i think it's in master story mission yeah uh making a tweet to how you do different damage types of shield base shield resistance to non-matching damage types across the entire game is being adjusted to 50 percent uh, it's sort of one to one to what Gambit is now. Um, there will be other things that allow you to do bonus damage, um, but for the most part now, like in a GM, go crazy, use whatever you want. You'll just rip through the shield and probably a full mag this time, right? It'll just take a full mag of your primary. It'll rip through the shield. It's not the end of the world. And if you really, really want to, you might you could. And if you're if you're a legend like Cruz and I. You've saved a disruption break weapon, and uh, the the fabled few that are left in the game, and you can disorient. There haven't been many with it, man. Kind of yeah. sad. And you disorient all the ads around him when you pop the shield, and you'll be ahead of the game, and everyone will be like, "Wow, this guy's insane." And uh, yeah, shield disorient meta. It's coming. We're calling out. it here. This is the hard read. I mean, I always thought Shield Strain would have been great if there were, like, shields in general content. And, it, like, shields <laughs> were, like, a part of the game. Like, more yeah. so than, like, a sprinkle in because this is a, a wizard and wizards have shields. But there's only, like, two of them in the strike. Yeah. I mean, I always, a little side tangent, I always thought that, at, like, like ads, like, kind of like servitors and kind of like the score and how they pop the totems. I always thought stuff like that should have been implemented more. You know, like imagine, and I I know I've talked about this with you, and I guess this sort of segues into the champions. Imagine if like champions were a real threat because of what they did to the ads, and not just because oh they're yeah, yeah. I remember you know like yeah, you about? don't pop a barrier, then the or surrounding enemies might get the barrier shield too, or yeah, exactly. like the unstop ads get all like aggressive and like get super so tanky. Get iron basically, it just gives them all iron. Um, you know, in the overload stuff, yeah. they just start healing like crazy. Like that, to me, like that cool. seems super sick because you've now created high priority like mini bosses that, if not dealt with immediately or or, or like tac tactfully, um, it will spiral out of control, and you're not going to have a good time. You know, but that's a we'll we'll, we'll table that for another day. Yeah, we'll bring out our uh, destiny wish list. <laughs> Bleed so you wanna, sword. You wanna lead us <laughs> off here on the champions? Yeah, for sure. Um, so each champion is kind of getting um, like they're the they're getting tied to the verbs and abilities of destiny now. So we can just kind of go through each one. Volatile rounds, for example, 
when you've got them on your weapon, they're going to pierce barriers and stun them just whenever you've got the volatile rounds. Um, same thing for Radiant. You just, once you're, when you're Radiant, you have your whatever SMG on, you're going to be able to pierce that barrier and pop them. Um, Strand's also going to have something, but essentially Solar and Void currently would be your uh, methods to pop a barrier champion without having to use something like RB. Um, and this, all these changes are going to make champions so much more like seamlessly integrated because they're going to be yes. a part of like your subclass. You can knowingly go into something being like, hey, I'm going to have like this solar setup. So I don't really have to worry about barriers and unstops, for example, um, with my weapons. Or maybe I only have radiant, so I do have to worry about unstop, but I'll be able to get radiant before every barrier so i don't have to think about that so i just i love how it's all tied in um so overloads jolt is going to be able to uh, stun them that's one of the conditions to stun them um suppressing is another one and probably one of the most strong ways to deal with them is slowing um you might have seen a lot of people talk about like choke lip and riptide for example but um, that is one reason why it's going to be such a strong weapon. One burst from Riptide or any choke clip weapon, you apply that slow, it's going to be able to stun that overload. If you shoot it again, you get the encasing in stasis. If you then shatter it, so if you basically break that frozen target, that's going to stun an unstoppable um arc blinding is also going to do that so they're cha they changed blinding nades real quick just so everyone knows uh, to disorienting nades so that they're not the same name the blinding is like the arc term so it's like the arc blind will stun them uh gl with blinding nades won't um, similar to the to the blind you get from uh queen's breakers that's yeah. that's like an arc blind i think they added that right yeah Didn't they add that yeah so that's i mean that's good makes queen breakers the the unstop champion meta <laughs> i don't know about um, that maybe levy's <laughs> breath exists dude that's sure true. speaking like, of levy's breath, breath yeah but i don't know if we'll get to it this episode but uh we'll talk about some weapon stuff that they've changed and oh levy's breath oh yeah it is the <laughs> champ killer now um last thing solar ignitions are also going to be able to stun them so not the easiest way I'll say to deal with unstops because arc blinding isn't too common and solar ignitions aren't necessarily that easy just to create on one target but um, some decent ways throughout like on the two, champions two tilt fox two tilt fox hey don't yeah. don't spoil man spoilers spoilers Return third rocket <laughs> it's coming <laughs> the caddy with Two barrels, who cares? We'll add a third <laughs> rocket. Yeah, people said that. Like, Well, not many, but I saw Dude, a little bit of that. And, um, well, like, sure, it only has two, but, like, Fourth Horseman only has four, but its catalyst gives it a fifth shot. Like, who cares how many barrels it has? Just give it another rocket. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> who cares? I'm not looking at the edge of my gun, but like, does this make sense if I can shoot a third rocket? <laughs> my RP is, is failing right now. <laughs> yeah, my like, fantasy. This isn't realistic. Uh, Destiny is realistic. If you're in the air, you wouldn't be 100% accurate. <laughs> um, if I hit this this Cabal armor with my palm as a warlock, I would break my hand. So why is my hand not broken? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got a point. Um, So that's pretty much all the champion stuff there that's covered. Um. Good changes. I love how it's just integrated into the subclasses. Um, Strand's gonna have something for barrier and champion, or barrier, barrier and champion, barrier and unstop, um, which we still don't know of. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't. I don't know. And if you guys want, I mean, there's there's a long list of things that are really good now, as a result of these changes, um, and and just just at a glance. I could tell you that like whatever you're using now probably still works. So none of that doesn't really change a whole lot. It just makes your life so much easier. Just infinitely easier. Right. Um, I'm not going to lie. Know. A lot of this whole like post is 
just so nice just to read yeah. because it's all like just makes things more simple build crafting more flexibility easier entry uh champions easier entry more abilities that can affect them um the way, mod customization it's the, the way the way that i see it in my head is like as it is now it's like destiny is like a like a, a series of like really really high mountains that you have to climb up and down and up and down and trying to figure out where you're going and that's why you know like you said if you're doing an activity you don't want to make a build because you have to climb another mountain to do that so you're just like whatever i'll just stay down here like it doesn't matter to me but then what they're doing is they're smoothing it all out and now it's just a, it's a light walk brisk walk to go do anything you want and it's just it's all there so easy so clean i love it so we talked about elemental wells charged with light or my cells they're all minus one cells they're they've got their own thing i'll say um because they're not staying in the game r.i.p rasputin um armor charge this is like the new hybrid blend of elemental wells and charge with light initially i would say that i had some suspicion and how it kind of works i still kind of do but with how like orb gen is going to work now uh, i think it's going to be really easy to have a lot of these stacks up which means you can basically get the benefit of your build a little more frequently um so whenever you socket a mod that uses like an armor charge system you essentially are like integrated to it. It essentially gives you like the taking charge thing. So where if you pick up a orb, you would get one charge of uh, light. Now you get one armor charge. And a lot of the mods kind of still exist in that same fundamental um, way. For example, um, what's the charged up? Is that the one that gives you one more or two more? Charged up, that gives you one more. One more. Super What's charges the one that too super much? charges too? So those pretty much as an example are your way to get more than I had default is three. Yeah, default's three right here. I should probably yeah. read this so I don't I'm just kinda of going off memory. I wanna well, prove I can, to everyone I can, that. I have I a little piece to talk about too here if you wanna I'll, yeah, I'll go just for jump it. in real quick. So so it says here many mods that previously created elemental wells or gave you stacks of charge with light have been converted to instead create an orb of power. And kind of what that means is you have, um, uh, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but there's a solar mod that makes, that gets you charged with light when you get rapid kills with an auto rifle, machine gun, or a trace rifle. Um, there's a void one that works with bows, scouts, and hand cannons. The arc one is like sidearms, SMGs, pulses. You know, I know blast radius is the GL on rocket one. <clears throat> yep. All of those mods now are just going to create an orb of power, right? And so if you're using, you know, an SMG, let's say you're using Akelos with, you know, Volt Shot and, uh, you know, you just slap that mod on and your Akelos is just going to be spitting out orbs like crazy, right? Um, and as far as the creating elements of wells, assuming this is like literal what they're saying, you could make orbs off of melee ability kills, grenade ability kills. Um, there may even be one that does a finisher to make an orb, possibly. But that one's a little bit more confusing because down below it says finishers consume orb recharges. So we'll get to that. Yeah, but like Reaping but, uh, will make her. You dodge and then you can get a kill. It's going to make an orb. The, it's funny how the system changed because before with the Masterwork integration, it was like, orbs are the thing that like is the extra stuff in the game and then they're mm -hmm. like actually orbs are a little too good so we're gonna almost take them away they're still gonna be in the game but only from like supers and select weapons if you have the right mods on and now they're just kind of going full send in oh, yeah. orbs orbs are like the, the build thing and and the the fact that just just by having any of these armor charge mod, any one mod on your your what you're wearing right now you have the benefit of taking charge so you you that mod activates passively right so you no longer have to slot taking charge in to to allow yourself to get armor charges or anything it just happens by having any of these mods slotted which is huge 
because before you would have to have a way to make the orb you'd have to have a way to collect the orb um and that could have been through either taking charge elemental charge and uh now they're just giving it to you that opens up another mod slot to, to put in another thing it's it's kind of crazy to think like initially the design was you spend one of your slots to have access to it and then you just have four other slots Yep. So now it's like you just have five default, but if we remember and recall back to the mod system, you could have more than five if you want. They're all in the same category. I technically you could yep. have if you could if you have the cost energy for it, you could run fifteen. <laughs> yeah. Which is, is insane. Absurd. I oh highly doubt any God. build is gonna go that crazy. But I would not be surprised if some of like the in intense ones are like ten, I mean, or like twelve. Can I can I can I touch on this passive thing a little bit? Because I have I have some theories and stuff, right? Shoot, go for it. So the sum mods provide a passive ongoing benefit while you have any stacks of armor charge, right? When you have one of these armor mods equipped every ten seconds, a stack of armor charge falls off if not consumed by something else. Players can extend this decay time by socketing the extended charge mod in the class item. For example, Font of Wisdom and the Head Socket will provide a bonus to gain, gain to Intellect while you have any Armor Charge active. So what this means is you walk over an orb, you get Armor Charge 1, you've now activated Font of Wisdom if you have Extended Charge. I'm assuming if, if sort of Bungie's philosophy is correct here, Extended Charge makes that 10 go to 15. I'm just That's just an arbitrary number, but all we know is Extended Charge is going to make it over 10, so we'll just start at 10, I guess. You get 10 seconds of Font of Wisdom, which is gives you a bunch of intellect. I'm pretty sure it gives you plus 50 or it gives you 100, right? Now, what's interesting about this mod is this could now start applying to things like Powerful Friends, to things like Radiant Light, um, and in terms of those stat boosts that they gave you, and then what it means by if not consumed by something else, um, you know, they're, they're, we're going to talk a little bit about high energy fire, but um, high energy fire gives you a damage bonus, which is now going to be 10%. Um, and we don't know yet, but I guess my sort of theorycraft assumption is you get 10 seconds of high energy fire or until you kill something, right? Yeah, that's so, that's what I've got together too you basically yeah, have like so, the you have that 10 seconds or if you wanted to run more time or whatever to yeah, and, and essentially use that if you don't end up consuming it then it ends there but if you consume it at six seconds you get that kill then it's done at six exactly so that's sort of the what they talked about managing the you know mitigating the power creep because high energy fire it it had a lot of potential to become a problem if anything got massively nerfed or whatnot, high energy fire and font for that matter, you know, had, had a lot of potential to become a problem um, because high energy fire worked with just giving you a 20% damage boost until you got a kill until you got a kill, which is that's important, right? Means I mean, in a GM, it. you could theoretically have it forever. Yes. You could just be doing more damage and have your teammate finish everything. Oh yeah. You know, and, and that's what a lot of people were doing. And they were going into like, let's say, um, if for whatever reason you can't have six people stacked in a well, um, you just, you run high energy fire and go into a damage phase and everybody just has 20%. As long as you don't kill anything, you have 20% on a boss at all times. Like Rolk 100 is a prime time. example for that because you can oh, kill yeah. those thrall, get the orbs ready. Um, if you're using taken charge or radiant light or something like that then you get given it and literally for the entire damage phase until yeah. ads start spawning below you you have just free damage like but now it'd be it'd be timed right so you, you yeah. can't have that forever but you could the... you could invest to have it for longer but the duration will eventually end yeah and that extended charge I, i'm curious to, to to find out how many mods you can because it gets slotted in the class item, which means if it follows the same rules as the chess piece, you could have three of these depending on the cost, right? Um, yeah. If you have three of these, assuming by some which I kind of like, logic, I like how these things are kind of tied to a section because yeah. I think it might be a little too OP and 
It, to have your entire they, they, armor slot, your entire armor set, just be extended charge mods. Exactly. And you have like three obviously and a half they cap it. But, I mean, <laughs> it's it it. This is like a um version of a cap, without actually capping yeah. it, because you can only yeah. have three, right? So let's say that's twenty seconds. You can only have twenty max. Yeah, and and it's still really good, but. What's interesting here, and this is probably if I think one of the most important lines here, in my opinion, some mods consume one, two, three, or all stacks of armor charge on a particular trigger, granting you an instantaneous benefit when they do. And I think we talked a little bit about energy converter, and I think that would be the big one to consume all, but the one, two, and three is interesting because. That tells me that there's certain effects. For instance, um, Ar Argent is it Argent Ordnance? Yeah, Argent or Argent? Argent one. Argent. Argent, yeah, Argent Ordnance. Um, that I I I see a world where they make that consume too. Um, and and it, it's just interesting that they're gonna put different armor charge costs on these mods. And then a little bit below, we see finishers now consume armor charges and not dip into your super energy. This may be a direct hit on special finisher. Yeah, I mean, it's just less likely. I mean, you just always have to be thinking about your charge at that point, which is nice. Yeah. So, all good things, the, though. See, you're going to... I think it's actually pretty... As of right now, I see pretty good balancing act between it because you have a system that has pretty high uptime but also has a pretty quick activation cycle, I'll say, because a lot of these effects are going to be consumed and you're instantly going to have to be getting more of them. So you're going to have to get more orbs. And I mean, honestly, maybe our super is going to come back a little too quick, but <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all of these have to work with one another with that cycle. So you're going to be making a lot of orbs if you want to actually like use a lot of things and real quick with the um like all the solar ones or maybe not all of them but most of the solar mods are stacking right i think actually instead of being mod dependent being like oh you need four ardent ordnance to get max it might actually just be stack based where if you if you have four it'll give you that four damage and then when you that get to three you go to three damage and two so it kind of keeps going down but you still have it yeah, I mean, Argent Ordnance, if that case, you, then you would stack. You would get six charges because that first rocket would be juiced into oblivion. Yeah, it could, yeah, juice, and then it goes down to five, and maybe you don't even get to, to shoot five because of the timer. Maybe it goes down to four. And... Yeah. But I, I don't know. So... I just think like those stacking mods, um, I actually think they work really well if if they work like that. And it's more based around how many stacks you have rather than how many mods. Because it's always weird to be like, I need to run four firepowers. It just kind of feels meh to get that benefit. We, yeah. we used to make fun of build videos that were like that. Oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, it's a bond devour controversy. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, four firepowers. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it's just absurd, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. I think they talk about extended charge mod in the class item. And they say time dilation in the class item. I wonder. Hmm. That's I wonder like if it's actually going to do something different. Um, I don't know exactly what that could, because that would be that would be very strange of them to uh, to to separate them, and I don't understand what time dilation could do because that's the thing. Extended charge and time dilation on paper right now seem like the exact same thing. They both that's extend true, the know. time that you have it, so. And we know that extended charge extends the decay time, so maybe, um, maybe time dilation gives you longer benefit of activation, and then extended charge is more like the if you're not using it time, you w it won't decay into the lower tier, or, you know, that's interesting. Because time dilation, how it works now, is the more mods you have of the same, the more increased the time you get, mm -hmm. right? Which still so could means... exist. It would just be like you'd have a longer time. Yeah, you'd have a longer initial time. Yeah. 
which That'd obviously wouldn't work for all mods, but if yeah. something like Protective Light still existed, it would give you more time on that buff. But then if it wasn't act like let's say Protective Light, you got the charges for it, but then you're not getting critted. Ex um, that's what um the extended charge would do basically it would give you more time to maybe get weak and then have it activate yeah. versus um time dilation which would be it activated and now i have more time with the benefit right because before it was five and then you can make it 10 or or you know you know what it might just be extended charge is just a like it's just a like a like a default extension right Whereas time dilation, you have to slot more of that mod. And then you get more. And then you could, if you put a time dilation and an extended charge and you stack the mod, then theoretically, that is like the highest value you could get in theory. Right? Yeah. So I, mean, I guess we'll see. It all, it all depends, right? But I think you're, you might be honest when you say like certain mods might be affected by time dilation. Right? Yeah, basically anything that had a timer before, rather than just like yeah. an activation. Because obviously, high energy fire, like its timer now is just the decay timer. But yeah. I mean, other I'm not buffs... even sure if it's a timer, but I think it is. I think it would make sense for it not to be, right? Well, yeah, I guess it's what we're assuming that it would go down. I don't know why yeah. it would be a timer if it did. It'd be strange to have a timer but then also decay. Yeah. Um, um we, I think armor charge is probably the thing that we still know the least uh, like it's just so much yeah i mean we have to um, see we have to see the verbiage that they use on some of these mods and they're like in in the mod previews they show us um just basic mods like resists and like you know recuperation and like you know the some of these other basic mods that don't have anything to do with armor charges so they didn't give us any previews of a single like image of a mod so this is all just complete speculation based off of what we know the current system to be yeah i think um that'll be definitely the biggest thing to figure out week one is how it all works and i think it's it'll be interesting how it affects like the raid meta i'll say because i feel like this could be a situation like shadow keep where we're just like not really familiar with it and it just isn't really that good and then by the time <laughs> the on light comes out or the equivalent final shape it's like okay now we understand what the meta is supposed to be for these and what mm -hmm. the best thing to do is yeah so um do you want to talk about where elemental wells are going yeah so instead of just kind of being like little orbs on the ground um they're kind of being integrated again into the subclasses so ionic traces exist currently stasis shards also exist um strand we think we know what it is right i'm f f i think i'm forgetting you said what it was it the threads no um well i wasn't oh. sure if it's the is it the tangles or not anyway whatever it's the tangles i think it's the tangles. I, right. I think it's the tangles but um we'll end up covering strand probably in the next one yeah well definitely i think i think so i don't think we'll have to wait for it um but the breaches and the fire spread are new we still don't really know what they are um but they're all essentially the same things. They're basically elemental entities that you are going to interact with, and that's how you're going to get those elemental wells. So as with before, if you remember, um, where was it? Um, previously created elemental wells um, gave you stacks of charge of light, convert it into orb instead. So this is kind of like the newer version of what the elemental wells are um we'll see what any more interactions we'll have because what we know we actually just got an update recently about like what the how the void breaches are going to work with like new fragments um i think that's where they're going to have the most impact um yeah. those fragments are insane and that's something yeah. we'll talk about you know a little bit later yeah they, they gave an example here i remembered this but i wasn't sure if it was in it or not um tempering which i don't even remember what it does but now it's going to create a fire sprite when you defeat an enemy with a solar weapon so that's super like simple 
fragment to essentially get the best benefit, uh, which would give you the fire sprite. So it's like, okay, solar weapon's easy. You can shoot something with your mini tool and it's going to make a fire sprite. Then that fire sprite is going to be able to give you, depending on what you're building with, a different ability, essentially. So for like this Emperor of Mercy real quick, like picking up the fire sprite is going to give you restoration. That's essentially well of life right there. Yep. And just, just, you know, tempering is the one where solar weapon final blows grant you and your allies increased recovery for a short duration stacks three times while Ember of tempering is active. Your weapons have increased airborne effectiveness and you take a 10 recovery stat penalty for having it on. That's probably why I never used it. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Well, there it's a lot more in. They essentially made. I would say that's probably the worst one. Is that fair to say for solar? Yeah, yeah, I agree. They made it probably a big staple if you want to think about fire sprites. Yep. Because and just just using a solar weapon is going to be real easy, especially when you're already incentivized to do it with like a solar reloader, for example. Yeah. I mean, this is just going to make you know, like we said, builds like, um, Verity's brow, just go absolutely insane. You know, um, and the void breaches. You said how fire sprites the the well of restoration or the the is like well of life. The restoration effect for the void breaches. They basically put well of utility into the void breach. So when you pick it up, you get class ability energy. That's kind of the the idea there. I think as of right now, that's probably as much info as we can give on it because yeah. we don't really know. That's another aspect, I'll say, of these like newer things that we just don't really know yet. And there'll probably be something that they leave for us to uh, explore in Lightfall because they definitely don't want to give us everything. And it's with how much they're changing, like, it, it makes sense because <laughs> there's a lot. I can't imagine yeah. they're going to tell us everything. I mean, I know I know a little bit about Strand. If I could, if you want me, if you want me to, based on what we found out today, right? Yeah, I mean, oh no, like we definitely have like a pretty good concept of Strand, which I think we should probably hold until okay. another episode because we can kind of do like a bigger deep dive on it. Yeah. Um, we'll just touch up on the next little shorter twelve that we had, and then probably call it there. Okay, and um, uh, so uh, do you want to finish it up? Those yeah, sure. Too, right? Um, the main goals here: streamline building, build crafting experience. Obviously, we talked about that. A lot of this stuff is just going to be a lot more simple. They're going to have this armor charge mechanic, and this is like the new mod system, which of course we kind of just finished going through. It's a lot, but there's definitely a lot of new possibilities in terms of what we can do. Um, not every build is going to be created one to one because like I said, there's some going, some changing, some sticking around. We don't know everything. We will know once we boot up the game. I think they're not going to give us a list, right? So that'll be super cool. Obviously, we saw all that artifact stuff. That's another huge change. Um, some people might be sad about this, but Warmind Cells, they just... They, if you were still using Different. them, you're crazy. I don't know. If yeah, I, listen, I had a build of them. <laughs> my uh, my consecration build would use wrath because my slams would make them, and then I would just shoot them and extra blow up. So I, to be honest, I, yeah, I, I will guess. miss that build um, because I did have some fun with it. But I, they had to be buffed, and if they just want to say goodbye and move on i think it's fine because elemental walls and our uh charge with light were still pretty similar in design warmind cells were very different at the end of the day they were literally just balls that you blow up the room with yeah i mean actually now that i think about it this is just kind of a random thought i wonder oh, i should have tried this using the um the consecration and then you make the still cell right but you run the arc one where you slide into it and it gives you your melee charge back <laughs> I mean, yeah. I listen. I feel I like feel most like of the time, be... I already got it back. But yeah, that's true. That's true. But I don't know. I mean, maybe just, you just wouldn't have idea. to run the scorching targets gives you your melee. That's true. Yeah, right? you'd save a fragment with but, and um, hey, but with the new fragments we saw today, which we'll talk about probably in a week upload time. Yeah. Uh, 
that's yeah there's some and, and those this, new fragments are kind of broken and this balancing act paragraph here um some ability energy gains stat bonuses and weapon damage bonuses from mods have been reduced though we've also added some new mods to expand your build possibilities this is looking more towards the ability it's looking at firepower it's looking at heavy handed um things like that and then the stat bonuses it's looking at powerful friends uh radiant light you know those type of mods and the weapon damage bonuses as we know um high energy fire did get reduced to 10 percent. right we know that to be confirmed uh there was an interview that uh who who was do you know who was being it was it mercules i don't know who it was but it was it was someone over at Bungie got interviewed. They talked all about it, and they did um, describe that there's these new kind of elemental damage mods that are 10%, and high energy fire still exists, but it's 10%, right? So I think the idea is that you have a high energy fire and you have one of these elements or two or three, you know, depending on how many slots you have, and then it kind of just helps your whole build type deal um so it seems like that is more is it it just goes in line with what they were saying you know tackling power creep and and really simplifying it down uh as not as big as it looked that took uh quite a bit of time to get there i mean it's funny because there's not that many words but there's so much to like think yes. about and discuss so that is pretty much the new I mean, their term, build crafting, but the new sort of loadout system and everything that's coming with it, because not only are we getting loadouts, but we're also getting a whole new mod system, which is definitely been long overdue, and it's great to have going forward. Um, So we will, the next one's a little bit smaller, this, this little twab, there's some PvP stuff, some other stuff, we'll just kind of like read through this, make sure we hit everything, and then kind of wrap things up. So, uh, this last little brief thing that was the blog post we talked about or looking at, um, there was some like economy stuff, which again, that'll be another thing we'll touch on probably in the next one. I think that's the next update here. So, um, we yeah. saw a little bit more on Niamuna. They showed like this little trailer of them spurring around looking at stuff. Um, that didn't really show too much. Um, Say the more recent trailers have shown a little bit more, especially strand stuff. Um, so yeah, right now red borders go crazy, raids, and they also made it so you can basically just grab them uh, each day from like the pirate season or if you want to go Any near a kill us the world. Yeah, right. So you just go buy them. That's not something they touched on here, but I know that's something later on that we probably won't talk about. Um, blues, thankfully, they're pretty much gone. Um, pretty much right now, I think we only we still get a few of them that like squeak through, but um, I think by like lightfall, they're like making sure that's gone. There it is, right here. The vast majority of blues should behave this way in terms of not showing up. Um, they brought back Rumble. I don't know why it ever left. <laughs> um catalysts so the basically the old catalysts aren't going to be terrible to get anymore because you used to play like a million strikes to have to get, or like gambit games to get them yeah and now they kind of have that season pass booster applied to them good change again basically just uh, wait till your season passes got all the upgrades i think that happens at like what like rank like 80 or something yeah i think it was around there somewhere like 80 just when you have all the upgrades then start you know power farming it um and that's of course if you even don't have them i'm sure most people listening yeah. have been there done that but hey if there's something you're missing like tommy's matchbook it's gonna go crazy <laughs> it's gonna scorch while it's overheating <laughs> and it's gonna kill you no, Symmetry catalyst now kills jolt. you dude that could be decent that'd be insane <laughs> that'd be nah, actually dude. insane <laughs> A symmetry is a weapon that like is so close to being good. Yeah, it's it's actually, it's it's a very small buff from being very nice. 
I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Very nice to use. Um, the exotic glaives you can't even grab right now, but eventually we'll be able to uh, just go to that evidence board and just grab them. So that's cool. Don't have to play Wellspring. Uh, as someone who only has one of them, that's a nice change for me. This was kind of crazy, like PvP wise, because they really just wanted these games to be just 50%. I guess that's their belief is that like no matter what every game sh should have like a 50% win rate um, and that's something with like fire team size they are matching with but I don't really care everyone effectiveness is a lot better it's cooler yep um, jump and shoot to your heart's jump content, and shoot I guess. yeah it's a little better BXR got nerfed a little bit feels weird um, dead messenger got nerfed from PvP yeah, thirty five percent splash. That's good. Um, Revoker is dead. <laughs> he won't miss shots and get your bolts <laughs> it's, back. You know, it's, dude. That's hold on. That's insane. Revoker got killed like two years after it came out. That's nuts. Two. I think it's that came out during Forsaken Year. I dude. I it's been I almost will, four I will years. I will die on this hill, Cruz. I will die on this hill. I know it wasn't you, but there was a lot of other people that when they saw what a Revoker's perk was. They're oh like, yeah, this is stupid. They're yeah, like, why who's, would, who, who misses? Would you, yeah, why, why would you? Why are you, like this is dumb? This is an awful uh, perk. I'm like, you're crazy. That. You're crazy. Getting a bullet back for missing is insane. Like all that means is that you just peek out and you just take a shot. Why not? Who cares? Just take a shot, and then if you hit him, you got a free kill. If not, you'll get that bullet back. That's insane. That's unbelievably broken. Not to mention it was bugged on shields for a while on Titan shields. It yeah, was and I mean, after hitting sometimes the you could even hit someone and it would give it, yeah, give it back because why not? I'll, ne I'll, I'll die on this hill. I, I don't think you're gonna die. The shit of me, man. That's uh, I remember that. I I was like I remember being kind of like uh, I don't know like the handling's kind of bad, but I mean, yeah, I was kind of in the middle. But there were some Free people that were like, I don't, I don't, what, what, who misses? Like, why would I want yeah, a worse sniper? Miss, just, forehead. This is such a bad know, hurt. It's insane to be like, oh yeah, I don't miss. Oh yeah, you don't miss. Well, why are you using it? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, sorry, that was a small tangent. Keep going. <laughs> it's, you're fine. I mean, we're just kind of knocking through this. Um, here's some really important thing in post life all seasons. More substantial changes to weapon hip fire reticles. Yeah, that's what, is. that's that's what we want. <laughs> there it is. I think if the reticles are like cool to see when they're unique, but like the goal of exposing more information specific to weapon types or exotic functionality. So that's things like like there's like in controller you've got your axe cone and like the aim assist cone. I guess there's gonna be more coming. I think they're 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 looking at that and like um kind of like dmt you know uh how it, it behaves a little differently when you hip fire it and um that what's that new perk god man it's not it's not cascade point it's offhand strike that one yeah i think they're they're looking they're talking about more stuff like that they want hip fire to be meta i mean i'm gonna hit the shotgun right now it is pretty meta the thing is basically that a thing is, is weird it's like 22 meters of hit fire after getting killed granted it's kind of weird like that's why i'm okay with it being that good like not many people are gonna get that kill and then be like yeah now i'm gonna where are you gonna be someone to hit fire you <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's pretty conditional uh but it is crazy when it works mm -hmm. um full auto melee i mean i'm down that, that i'm as down. A, yeah as a, as a as a as a glaive user as a glaive enjoyer sign me up yeah i mean why not you know we already got the full auto setting so why not just make everything on like honestly it's just like whatever it just makes it easier um yeah. another set of craft will reprise weapons with an origin trait this remember this is all stuff coming like post lightfall um as long as it's not goss as long as goss it comes absolutely last we're chilling i think goss could have a cool shotgun but Goss like, weapons are easily the worst out of all of them. Uh, rapid fire fusion, maybe with reservoir auto loading, that could be kind of cool. Uh, it, oh, imagine if it had reservoir and uh, uh, 
Why am I forgetting these perks Recon? today, man? No, no. Um, repulsor brace. Oh my god. Well, hey, overshields <laughs> are honestly broken. No, repulsor brace is not even a meme anymore. It, it's a meme in the mean... fact that it's a, it's in the damage slot. And personally, I would almost never consider losing damage to have if, if, more as soon overshields. As you get a repulsor brace plus a damage perk, dude. It's over. <laughs> yeah, eventually it will. It will be in the demo it's slot, done. and it'll be demo what one for all repulsor brace frenzy something like that like that would be really good obnoxious especially with what we know about void man it is that's yeah. crazy Sheesh. Well, that's gonna be a wild one um Saiyans got nerfed in pvp because they're not tanky anymore and they take a lot longer to get cool um you know it's funny they they have these dodge changes here just pr and pretend you don't them. see them, viewers. Uh, yeah, they just, just delete them. That's they literally changed that back like today. So they're like, oh, we actually don't need to do that. <laughs> it's like insane. Um, the other still exists. I don't know why thrusters going back, but it is. Um, they made storm nades not quite OP anymore, especially in PvP. Like they're so much slower. They're kind of just like stupid now. Like they still track, but they're like <laughs> they take a little bit longer to know what they're doing. Um, I'm gonna scroll through a bunch of pictures and oh yeah, movie of the week. We won movie of the week because Numbly's great editing skills. Shout out to Numbly. Yep, Numbly. Uh, cool concept. Really like came together really well. And honestly, it is a pretty epic video. So if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. It's like a minute thirty long. I'll play it now. I'll let you do that on your own time. It's cool. Um, it's it it's is cool. good. Watch it, it's especially really cool. if you, even if honestly, I was gonna say especially if you know Elden Ring stuff. But even if you don't, like I never played I, Elden Ring and I thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah, I me neither. And I was like, it it is cool. So that's everything we really want to talk about. I don't really want this going too too much longer. You know, we talked almost an hour about armor charge. So, <laughs> um, next episode. Uh, probably I'll probably upload it in a few more days. Like we'll record it in the next little bit. Um, not really gonna stick that schedule and just kind of get them out. Um, so we got some economy updates, and then we have another twelve with a few more interesting things, and then we might even hit the weapon tuning. So I think because I think the first two are gonna be a little quicker. Weapon tuning, pretty decent stuff in there. Maybe not as much as we'd like, but there's something. So, yeah. What's uh, what's the biggest thing you are excited to talk about next next episode? Next episode, economy Man. focusing. Uh, economy economy wise, there's not a whole lot. I mean. I I guess it's nice to be able to dip back into the, into weapons that are that are you know kind of long lost and gone. So I guess that's kind of cool. Um, you know, maybe not to talk about I guess, but one of the weapons that's coming back specifically in, in GMs, um, with what we know, could be pretty good. Yeah, there's definitely some new like things that are being added. We already teased that third rocket. I think that I think that'll be hilarious. <laughs> um, and uh, and that's wob that's after that. I don't not a whole lot there. No, that's the thing. I think we'll be able to kind of get through decently quick on these two. But then we'll be just on the weapon talk for a while. That'll be like a big like sandbox talk too. Oh, Maybe yeah, talk about day one strats. True. Yeah, this will be big. Um. So yeah. Uh. Stick around. Uh, we got more coming. There's another. There's another episode coming soon. In a couple of days. Um. If you guys have anything, you know, any any opinions that, you know, about the build crafting the armor charges kind of like what you know what are you hoping to find from it you know let us know we want to hear it i just put on a screen <laughs> two men flawless 
crown. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, I don't need the other stuff open now. I'll have this. Good times, man. I miss this low man. That was one of the few that I actually enjoyed. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's... Uh, I'm I, I mean, I don't even do them. Look at that. We just killed Phase 1 Galran. Huge. The old Liar's I definitely, Handshake. The old so Liar's good. Handshake. I definitely wouldn't be using Arc Strider. I would definitely be using... Um, uh, What's the spear one? What's it called? Spear one. Oh, uh, uh, oh, the well, super. I don't ever. Yeah, the super. What's it called? Oh my god, gathering storm. <laughs> gathering storm. Oh my god, I haven't used that. I want to say since like the second week. I use it all Big the time, game. but I forgot. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like this is, uh, is so good. It is good. It would be very good in Galaron. That free damage. This is insane. I'm using Acrius for damage too. Like that's meta. That's just body uh, shotting too. That's, that's my great. favorite part. So yeah, do you want to? Uh... Yeah, I'll do a little sign off. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like the episode and like the new little format. Um, we'll be here definitely for the next little bit and going into Lightfall. Um, there's all so much to talk about, which is great. It feels really nice having meaningful things around again. So, um, <laughs> stick around like Vandal said, and, uh, we'll be talking about everything coming before light falls so that we'll be talking about everything. So if you, any yeah. questions related to anything that you read, cause we're kind of catching up, um, uh, we can kind of talk about, we can even be like. With uh, the armor charges, what do you think um, is going to be like an optimal setup day one? You know, we can we can bust out some ideas around that too, or some exotics we want to try out right away. There's a lot of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, and and just again, just let us know what we can do uh, better. Something you'd like to like hear more about. Um, another thing we probably I probably should have I, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. If you guys want us to do like a, you know, I know we're we're talking about streaming uh, for the Wendigo week, um, but just in general, maybe hit a hit a day, or if we schedule it like maybe once every two weeks or so, um, do a do a live session. Yeah, more, of course. Get some more questions going. Um, let us know. You know, we can try and schedule something. And uh, it can definitely be really good on weeks where there's not like necessarily a lot of information but like the week prior there's a bunch of stuff yeah because it's like oh what did you guys think about this how could you integrate it and it's like you know live questions coming in and we get feedback from you guys right there so i think i think definitely something probably sooner rather than later it'll it might uh might become a, a norm for us So, um yeah, yeah let's uh let's call it there enough rambling we you know we hit, hit the 147 mark if you're curious that's where we're at right now oh boy which is uh yeah it's pretty pretty healthy uh pod considering we only touched on like two things you know like two main <laughs> posts right but they were they were very deep oh very yeah deep especially the second one yeah. well, well yeah. i guess the first one but the second one not actually like the the first post, but the second stuff we started talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next episode pretty soon.